Okay. Right, so can you guys see my screen now? Yes, sir. All right, yes, sir. Okay, okay, that's good. So our topic for today is chapter 4, statistics. Okay, so lahat ng nandito sa statistics na to is yung mga pinaka-basic lang. Okay, so tuturoan ko lang kayo kung paano yung mga pinaka-basic. All right, so let's start. So statistics, of course, ano nga po yung pinaka-definition nito? So it is a branch of mathematics dealing with the collection, analysis, interpretation, uh, presentation, and uh, of masses of numerical data. Or you can just simply uh, say that and say statistics, it's a collection of quantitative data. Okay? So kahit uh, anong mga data yan, uh, statistics na yung tawag natin yan. Lalo na kapag kinolekta mo yung data tapos uh, may balak kang i-analyze or interpret or pag-aralan yung uh, data na yan. Okay? So we have two types of statistics. So we have descriptive and then the inferential statistic. Right, so yung unang-una natin ginagawa is descriptive. Okay? So ito na yung mga ngolekta muna kayo ng data. You organize nyo after yung i-collect. And then after yung organize, so pwede nyo i-summarize then And then uh, ilagay nyo pa sa chart kung gusto nyo. Okay? Kapag nakuha mo na yung data, pwede kang uh, mag-go deeper or uh, let's say parang mag- uh, alam mo tawag dito, maglagay ka ng conclusion or magbigay ka ng conclusion about the data na nakalike mo. So, ang tawag na natin doon is inferential statistics. Okay? So, dito na yung, you know, just by looking or just by observing, uh, you're going to interpret uh, interpret and draw conclusion from the data. Okay? So, mamaya ipapakita ko ano yung mga klase na pwede nyo gawin na uh, uri na inferential statistic. Okay? So first one is uh, under the measures of central tendency. So we have three topics uh, on this one. So we have mean or the arithmetic mean, the median, and then the mood. Okay, so first one is the arithmetic mean. So when we see the arithmetic mean, it is the most commonly used measure. Well, in fact, 90% ito laging gamit natin. Okay, kasi uh, parang ito yung pinaka-reliable uh, among the three. Okay. So arithmetic mean is the most commonly used uh, measure of central tendency. Uh, arithmetic mean of a set of numbers is often referred to as simply the mean. Okay, so pwede mong uh, paikli niyan wherein we can say uh, mean. Okay, so to find the mean for a set of data, so meron na tayong two steps. So find the sum of the data values and divide by the number of data values. Okay, so very simple. Actually, Baka hindi nyo alam yung parang tawag doon. Pero ginagawa nyo yun palagi. So, ang, tawag, ang ginagawa nyo yung averaging, kinukuha nyo yung sum, tapos i-divide nyo kung ilang count of uh, numbers yung nandun. So, ang tawag natin doon is arithmetic mean. Okay? Or simply mean. So, for instance, to find the mean of the five salaries listed below. So, let's say, uh, nagkaroon ako ng trabaho. Okay? And then, of course, karon ako ng trabaho sa isang kumpanya. Ito yung una kong sweldo. Tapos nag-resign nag ako. Ito naman yung pangalawang kumpanya na uh, napasukan ko. Hanggang sa pangatlo, pangapat, panglima. Ngayon, gusto ko makuha yung average. Ano nga ba yung average ng salary ko nung nagtatrabaho pa ako? Okay? So, again, two steps lang. Find the sum and then divide this one by the count of number of data values. Okay? So, here's the solution. So, mean is equal to the sum of the uh, data and then divide it by the number or counts of uh, data. So we have five datas. One, two, three, four, five. So that's five. It's divided by five. Okay? So pag sinolog nyo to, makukuha nyo is 206,500. Divided by five is 41,300. So this is the average of my salary. Okay? So, of course, di ko salary ito. Sobrang laki naman. So, hindi naman in-indicate dito. Baka ito is per year. Okay, 43,750. So, parang more or less 2 million peso na ito eh. So, yeah. Baka in a year ito. Alright. So, the next one. So, bago pala, muna yun, is meron bang question? I hope very clear. Napaka-straightforward doon itong yun. Ito. Answer. Alright. That's good. Okay, okay, so as usual, after an example, ah, mamaya pa pala yun. So additional pala to. 
Okay, ito yung pinaka-description talaga ng darit na tikmin. So, it is a traditional symbol used to indicate assumption uh, is a Greek letter sigma. Okay? So, kunin nyo muna yung summation. Or I think, uh, alam nyo naman na yun eh. Kunin nyo lang yung lahat. Pag-aadin nyo lang lahat doon. Ang tawag natin doon summation. Or, uh, ito yung symbol niya. Okay? Sigma letter. That's the notation uh, sigma x called summation notation. Denotes the sum of all the numbers in a given set. Okay, so we can define the mean using summation notation. So, actually, kahit ito lang, kahit ito lang intindihin nyo para sa mean, uh, enough na to. So, mean is the mean of n numbers is the sum of the numbers divided by n. Okay, so mean, summation of datas, and then the count of datas. Alright? So, additional, statisticians often collect data from small portions of a large group in order to determine information about the group. In such, uh, in such situations, the entire group under consideration is known as the population. Okay, so kahit anong data pa yan, kung buong data yan, ang tawag natin yan population. Okay, so yung subset of that population is called the sample. Okay. So, for example, uh, sa isang class, meron tayong count of 50. Kapag kinuha mo lang doon is 10 students, okay, ang tawag natin doon is 10 sample out of that population. Okay, so parang yung population yung total. So, it is traditional to denote the mean of a sample by x bar. Okay, so ang basa natin dito is x bar. And then to denote the mean of population by the Greek letter is mu. Okay, ang tawag natin dito is mu. Low or lowercase mu. Okay. So, ito yung symbol ng uh, average or mean ng sample natin. Okay. So, again, kapag sinabi natin sample, it is a subset of that population. Okay. And then, kapag yung kabuuan naman, yung lahat-lahat, is the uh, mu. Okay. Ito yung mean naman ng population. Right, so I hope uh, tandaan nyo itong dalawang to, medyo important ito. So ito yung sa sample, ito naman yung sa population. Alright, so we have an example here, find the mean. So six friends in a biology class of 20 uh, students received test grades of 92, 84, 65, 76, 88, and 90. So kung papansin nyo, out of 20 students, so this is the population, we only uh, have or we've only got six uh, test grades. So, ang tawag na natin dito is sample. So, kapag sample, ang gagamitin natin is X bar. Okay? So, find the mean of this test course. So, ang gagamitin natin is X bar since sample lang nga siya out of the population of 20. So, the six friends are a uh, sample of the population of 20 students. So, we use uh, X bar to represent the mean. So, kunin nyo lang lahat yung summation. Ito na yun sa taas, and then kung ilan yung data or yung counts of data or count of sample. Okay? So, makukuha nyo is 495 divided by 6. So, uh, hindi ko na hinihintay na i-verify nyo. Okay? Ah, tama ba tong competition sa taas? So, iiwanan ko na to sa inyo, and then uh, i-verify nyo na lang kapag katapos ng lecture natin. Okay? Para mabilis tayo. So, 495 yung makukuha mo dito, divided by 6. Thus, you will get uh, you will get 82.5 as the mean or as the average of that test course. Okay? So, I hope this one is clear. Kapag sample, X bar. Kapag population, is mu. Okay? Ito. Itong uh, lowercase uh, mu or mu. So, any questions so far? Answer. Answer. Alright. So, feel free to interrupt me anytime kung may mali man akong nasabi or kung may na-miss ako. So, interrupt nyo lang ako okay, para ma-address natin kagad. So, as usual, after this example, you'll be having a quiz. Actually, hindi nang tawag to na quiz niya. Parang sleep break lang to. Okay. So, a doctor ordered four separate blood tests to measure a patient's total blood cholesterol levels. So, the test results were 245, 235, 220, and then 210. So, find the mean of the blood cholesterol, cholesterol levels. Okay? 
So, kaya kaya nyo na yan. In just one minute or in just less than a minute, masasagutan nyo na agad yan. Okay? Alright, so next one is the median. Okay? So, from the word itself, median is like middle. So, yun yung pinakahint na dito. So, this is another type of uh, average. Uh, it's a median. So, essentially, the median is the middle number. Okay? Like uh, I have said. Or the mean of the two middle numbers. So, depende yan kasi. So, pwede yung middle number na mismo. Or the mean of the two middle numbers. Kasi minsan, dalawa yung middle natin. Eh. In a list of numbers that have been arranged in numerical order from smallest to largest or largest to smallest. So, any of these numbers, any list of numbers that is arranged in numerical order from smallest to largest or largest to smallest is called a rank list. Okay? So, either of those two naman eh. We call that one rank list. Okay, so again, ito yung parang pinaka-description or ito yung pinaka-kailangan mo uh, when it comes to knowing how to solve the median. Okay, so the median of a rank list of n numbers is, well, we have two criteria. So the middle number, if n is odd. Okay, itong n na to is yung count of data or yung count of sample. So kung yung count ng sample is, let's say, 5, which is odd, so yung nasa gitna mismo nun. Okay? So, kung 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 yan, so yung 3. Okay? But how about if the count of data is even? Let's say you have now 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, mangyari niyan, kukunin mo yung dalawang gitna. So, yung dalawang gitna niya dito is yung 3 at 4. Okay? So, get the sum of that 1 and then divide it by 2. Or just simply get the mean uh, of those two middle numbers. Okay? So, we have an example here para mas maintindihan nyo. So, find the median of the data in the following list. So, we have here 4, 8, 1, 14, 9, 21, and 12. So, actually, meron tayong two steps para gawin yung median. So, pag sinabi natin median, i-arrange nyo muna. Okay? Arrange that from smallest to largest or largest to smallest. So, it doesn't matter kahit ano sa dalawang yun. Okay? And then, pangalawa is bilangin nyo. Okay? Kung ilan ba yung count of data? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, good thing. Uh, add siya. Kapag add, sobrang dali. Kung ano yung nasa pinakagitna, yun na yung sagot. Okay? So, di pa natin alam. So, mamaya makikita natin yung arrangement nato sa solution. For number 2 naman, 46, 23, 9. So, bilangan muna natin. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay? So, dito naman, dalawa na yung middle natin. So, ang gagawin natin, kukunin natin yung dalawang middle and then divide natin yun yun. Uh, by 2 para makuha natin yung uh, pinaka-middle talaga. Okay? Alright, so here's the solution. So again, you can rank them, uh, rank them from smallest to largest or largest to smallest. But in here, what I did is uh, I've arranged them or I've ranked them from smallest to largest. Okay? So ito na yun. For the number 1, we have 1, 4, 8, 9, 12, 14, and then 21. So good thing, add to. Okay? So, we have 3 here, and then we have another 3 here. So, yung pinakagitna na nyan is yung 9. So, yan na yung median natin. The middle number is 9, so this is our median. For number 2, we have even count of data. So, 2, 4, 6. Okay, so na-arrange na rin siya. 3, 4, 6, 7, 7, 8, 9, 9, 2, and then 108. So, kunan nyo yung dalawang nasa gitna. Okay, which is the 77 and then 89. So, add those two numbers. So, 77 and 89. Uh, hindi ko alam kung ano sa calculator. And then, divide it by 2, you will get 83. Okay? So, I hope tinatest nyo rin. Baka mamaya yung, res uh, mamaya yung result is mali. Okay? Pero yung sagot dito is 83. So, thus, 83 is the median of the number 2. Okay? So, are we clear so far regarding with this one? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Alright, so sobrang basic lang naman yan. And then again, after this example, you will have a quiz. So two numbers then. So again, you only need two steps. Arrange that one from smallest to largest or largest to smallest and then uh, count the number of data. So kapag add, then that's a good thing. Yung pinakagit na yung kunin nyo. If it's uh, even, then kunin nyo yung dalawang middle number and then divide it by two. Yung summation pala ng dalawang middle number. So, ito, uh, may decimal tayo. So, i-arrange nyo siya 
And then, yun. Ang dagdag lang naman is decimal. So, ganun pa rin naman. Alright, so the third one or the last one for the central of tendency is the mode. Okay, so ito yung medyo para sa akin na. Para sa akin, parang ito yung medyo nakakainis pagdating sa mga averaging. Kasi lalo na pag sobrang dami ng raw data and then pinapakuha sa yung mode, sakit sa ulo. Okay. So this is the third type of average, which is the mode. So mode is simply the list of numbers is the number that occurs most frequently. So pag sinabi natin mode, hanapin mo lang yung data na nag-occur. Uh, okay? Na, ma na mas marami uh, sa lahat ng data mo. Kung meron kang 100 data, hanapin mo kung ilan yung number na naulit. So pwedeng dalawa or pwedeng tatlo. Okay? Or pwedeng isa lang or pwedeng wala. Okay? So ganun kahirap. So some list of numbers do not have a mood. Okay? So possible yun. For instance, in the list 1, 6, 8, 10, 32, 15, 39, so lahat sila nag-prompt lang one time. Okay? Nag-occur lang uh, once. Kaya uh, hindi natin masasabi na, ah, 6 yung mood. Hindi ganun. Kasi lahat sila pare-pares na nag-prompt lang one time. Okay? So because no number occurs more often than the other numbers, there is no mood. And then, a list of numbers data can have more than one mood. So pwede rin dalawa, pwede rin tatlo, pwede rin lima, pwede rin sampo. So for instance, in the list 4, 2, 6, 2, 7, 9, 2, 4, 9, 8, 9, 7. Okay? So kung papansin ninyo, nag-prompt yung 2 natin thrice. And then, ano pa? Yung 9 din natin thrice. Okay? So the number 2 occurs 3 times and then the number 9 uh, occurs 3 times. So each of the number uh, numbers occurs less than 3 times. So thus, 2 and 9 are both modes for the data. Okay? So, hassle to. Paano kapag binigyan ko kayo ng 100 na data, then papahanap ko lang sa inyo yung mode. Diba? Sakit sa ulo yun. Anyway, hindi naman ang bibigyan ng ganong karaming data. Ma, sampu lang ganon. Sampu or 25. Siguro na maximum. So, marami-rami pa rin yun. Okay? So, we have an example here for finding the mode. So, uh, we have number 1, 18, 15, 21, 16, 15, 14, 15, 21. Okay, so ano yung mode natin sa number 1? 15, sir. 15. So, uh, pasensya na, no? Lalo na sa mga may, let's say, malabo mata mo. So, ang sakit talaga sa ulo na ito ay mga nakasalamin. Kasi, yun, aalamin mo, bibilangin mo talaga isa-isa. So, huwag kayong maduduling. Okay, so ito, nag-prompt yung 15 natin 3 times. So, yung mode natin dito is 15. Okay. So, simple lang siya, pero complicated kapag madami. How about the number two? Wala po. Wala po. Wala. Okay. So, one, the mode here is four. For number two, uh, there is no mode. Okay. So, I think solution natin. 15 is our mode. And then for the second one, there is no mode. Okay. Alright. So, as usual, after that one, you're going to have a quiz. So, yeah, and very obvious. Ito, very obvious din. So, sobrang dali. Okay? So, kung papansin ninyo, ba, sir, bakit parang sobrang dali ng mga kwan? Okay? Kasi, ang mahalaga dito sa uh, subject na to is malaman nyo yung mga basic. Kasi nga minor to, di ba? Pinakaunang-una yung subject. Okay? Alam nang bigyan ko kayo ng complicated. So, mahalaga dito malaman yung fundamentals para pagdating nyo ng second year or third year, uh, yun na yung mas uh, gagamitin nyo yung mga uh, deeper na application when it comes to uh, statistic. Okay? Hindi lang ito actually, mas marami pang mas mahirap. Alright, so as a conclusion, the mean, the median, and the mood are all averages. However, they are general, uh, generally not equal. So the mean of a set of data is the most sensitive of the averages. Kasi nga, uh, kapag may nabagong isa, yun na yung, uh, mababago na rin yung data mo. Okay? So, ito yung pinaka-sensitive out of those three, yung mean natin. Okay? A change in any of the numbers changes the mean, and then uh, and the mean can be changed drastically by changing an extreme value. Okay? So, in contrast, meron naman tayong dalawa wherein hindi siya super sensitive, like, uh, like the median and then the uh, mood. So, for example, sa median, uh, as long as nakita nyo ng arrangement dun sa pinakagitna, or yung nakuha nyo na yung pinakagitna, so, kahit mabago yung value ng nasa smallest or largest, same pa rin yung median mo. And then for the mode, uh, 
pwede siyang mabago pero uh, very minimal yung chance kasi yung count of uh, data na nag-occur yung uh, bibilang nyo doon. Okay? So, when a data set has one or more extreme values that are very different from the majority of data values, the mean will not necessarily be a good indicator of an average value. Kasi nga, super sensitive na ito. Okay? Mabago lang isang data natin, mababago na lahat. Okay. So, for example, okay, in the following example, we compare the mean, median, and then the mood for the salaries of five employees of a small company. Okay, so we have five salaries here. Kukunin natin yung mean, median, and then the mood. Alright. So, we have here the solutions. So, tingnan nyo muna, 3, 70, 60, 36, 20, 20. So, yun yung mga salary of each uh, small company. So, for the mean, okay, ito yung gagawin nyo, of course. So, alam nyo na yan, summation of the uh, data and then divided by the count of data. So, you will get 506,000 divided by 5. So, the mean is 101,200. For the median, again, just arrange it. Okay, so arrange nyo lang to. So, yan, na-arrange na, -arrange na siya actually. Yung pinakagitna yung median natin since add number naman siya or add yung count of data natin. Tama, 36,000? Median? Yes, sir. Yes, po. Yes, sir. Alright. And yes, then for sir. the mood, alam nyo na kaagad. Okay, dalawang beses nag-prump yung 20,000 natin. So, the mood is 20,000. So, kung papansin ninyo, lahat sila is magkakaiba. 101,200, and then we have 36,000, and then 20,000. So, lahat yan average. Pero, yun na nga, magkakaiba. Ang layo. Ang layo ng value. Okay? So, the data contain one extreme value that is much larger than the other values. This extreme value makes the mean uh, considerably larger than the median and then the mode. So, babansin ninyo, sobrang layo na neto dito. So, kung ito, 36,000 to 20,000, so, Medyo, medyo pwede pa eh. Medyo dikit pa sila. Pero ito sobrang layo na. Like, three times na na ito. Uh, five, yeah, four times lang na ito. Okay? So, most of the employees of this company would probably agree that the median of 36,000, the median, median of 36,000 better represent the average of the sales. I think may correction dito. Okay? The average. Okay? Change nito. Uh, that the average of this one is 36,000. Better represents the... Pero parang tama naman. Teka lang. Ulitin ko lang ha. Baka namali lang ako ng type. Most of the employees of this company would probably agree that the median of 36,000 better represents the average of the salaries than does either the mean or the mood. Ah, tama, tama, tama. Okay? So, uh, iniisip ng mga uh, employee, uh, yung median, yung pinaka-appropriate Okay? na average ng uh, ito, out of this uh, data. Okay? Rather than the mean or the mood. Kasi nga, 101,000 is too much. And then 20,000 naman is sobrang baba. So, ito yung parang pag-aagrihan ng lahat ng mga employee. Alright? 36,000. Alright? So, yun lang naman yung isa sa mga dapat nyong alalahanin. Hindi porket uh, uh, mean. Uh, median and then mood para pare-parehas ng result. Uh, hindi. Okay, lalo na kapag meron na extreme value. Lalo na na ito, 370,000. Okay? So, ang pinaka-reliable pa rin para sa akin is yung uh, mean, yung pinakauna. Kasi, kinukuha mo yung lahat ng data. Okay? And then, divide mo sa lima out of those data. Unlike this one, hindi siya ganun ka-reliable kasi nga, pwede mong palitan yung pinakauna ng largest or smallest. So, hindi pa rin napalitan to siya ganun ka-sensitive. And then, same with this one. Kung ano lang yung pare-pares na nag-prom. Okay? So, medyo okay din itong mode. Unlike the median. Alright. So, next one is the weighted mean. Okay? Ito na yung medyo mas advanced ng konti sa simply arithmetic mean. So, meron na tayong weighted mean. So, pag sinabi natin weighted, so meron na tayong mga weights of each mean or each sample. Okay, so a value called the weighted mean is often used when some data values are more important than the others. Okay, so dito pa lang dapat alam nyo na na, let's say, sa score nyo. Okay, of course, mas mahalaga yung exam kaysa sa mga assignment or seat breaks. So ang total ng exam is 100 lang and then ang total ng mga 
assignment and seat breaks niya is out of 500. So let's say naka 400 out of 500 ka dito sa seat breaks and assignments. Pero sa exam mo is naka mo lang is uh, let's say 40 out of 100. So malaki yung chance na babagsak ka pa rin. So parang ganun. Okay? So pag sinabi natin weighted mean, kinoconsider mo na yung uh, weight ng isang sample or ng isang bagay. So for instance, yun na sabi ko kanina, many professors determine a student course grade from the student's quizzes and the examination. So consider the situation in which a professor counts the examination score as two quizzes scores. So dito, yung weight ng uh, exam natin is twice the score of the quiz. Okay, so yung quiz natin is one is to one, pero yung score ng test mo will be Uh, one is two or two is to one, okay? So times two na quiz nyo. So to find the weighted mean of the student scores, the professor first assign each of the quiz scores a weight of one and then the exam score as a weight of two, okay? So a student uh, with quiz scores of 65, 70, and then 75, so ito yung mga quizzes niya, and then an exam score of 90 has a weighted mean of, so ito na yun. Okay, so weighted mean is equal to, so kunin nyo lang to, multiply nyo sa weight, which is ang weight ng quiz natin is 1. And then the next one is 70, so ang weight pa rin nito is 1 since it's under the quiz. Plus 75 times 1 plus 90 times 2 na dito since ang weight na ng exam nyo or ng exam natin dito is 2. And then divided by the count of weights. Okay, so ang papansin ninyo, meron lang tayong 1, 2, 3, 4 data or 4 counts of data. Pero hindi yung ilalagay nyo dito. So, 5 yung ilalagay nyo kasi yung count of weights yung ilalagay nyo. Okay, so meron tayong 1, 2, 3, and then ito is twice the weight of your quiz score. So that is why uh, 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2 is equal to 5. Okay, so if you're going to do the math here, you'll get 390 divided by 5 which will get, uh, give you a weighted mean of 78. Okay? So yan yung average ng mga scores mo. Okay? So note that the numerator of the weighted mean above is the sum of the products. So ito na yan, sum of the products of each test score. Products of each test score. Mali, mali, mali. With the products of each quiz score. Okay? Malitan nyo to into quiz score and its corresponding weight. And then the number 5 in the denominator is the sum of all weights. Okay. Tama ba? Of each test score. Ah, hindi, hindi, hindi. Kaya pala, of each quiz and test score. So dalawa to, okay? The product of each quiz and test scores. So I think na-miss ko yung word na and quiz. So, correction ulit dito. Okay, kulang to. Baka ma-misinterpret nito or may misunderstood nyo. Okay, so yung denominator natin is the count or, or the sum of all weights. Okay, which is 5. Right, so maraming correction. So, tandaan nyo lang yon. So, papalitan ko na lang. Inilagi, ilalagi ko na lang mama yung updated na ito para pag nirevue nyo ulit, uh, hindi kayo malito. Anyway, So, ito na yung parang pinaka-description para malaman nyo kung ano ba or papaano ba gamitin ng the weighted mean. So, the pre uh, procedure for finding the weighted uh, mean can be generalized as follows. So, the weighted mean, the weighted mean of the n numbers, uh, x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3, hanggang kahit ilang data pa yan, okay, with the respective assigned weights, which is w1, w2, w3, and then wn. Okay, so ito yung weight ng x sub 1 mo. Weight naman to ng x sub 2, weight rin ng x sub 3, and then weight kung hanggang ilan man yan. So, depende kung saan naka-assign yung mga weights na yun. Okay? So, dito, ang naka-assign naman dito is 1 lang para sa quizzes. And then, 2 naman para sa uh, test. Okay? Or exam. Alright. So, ito na nga. Weighted mean is equal to the summation of the product of uh, the data times its weight. Okay, so depende ito kung ano yung uh, corresponding weight ng data na ito. It depende yun sa sentence. Okay, where uh, summation of x times w is the sum of the products formed by multiplying each number by its assigned weight. 
Okay? So, take note lang, uh, take note lang tayo dyan sa assign weight na yan para hindi kayo uh, mamali. And then, the summation of W is, of course, the summation of weights. Okay? So, very straightforward lahat ng uh, nandito. So, just by simply reading it, alam nyo na kaagad. Okay? So, we have an example for the weighted mean. So, many colleges use the four-point grading system. So, sino dito yung gumamit ng four-point grading system dati? Sa high school nila or sa senior high? Meron ba? Yung grade nyo na binibigay sa card nyo is four or three or ano ba? Plus, or, or A or B plus. May mga ganun eh. B minus. So, hindi ko alam to kasi never ko na-experience. Do naririnig ko lang sa mga ibang school. Okay? So, we call this one a uh, four-point grading system. So, a student's grade point average or the GPA is calculated as a weighted mean where the student's grade in each course is given a weight equal to the number of units or credits. So, hindi ko alam kung totoo, uh, totoo to. Siguro kapag major, uh, mas mabigat yung weight okay? or mas malaki yung score. Kapag minor lang, let's say, yun, mga minor subjects, uh, mas mababa. So, dito naman, sa UC, uh, each subject is the same. Okay, lahat yan pare-parehas. Ang pinagkakaibahan lang ng weight natin is yung test score, yung mga quizzes nyo, mga seat work, and then mga assignments. So, of course, kapag seat work and assignment, mas mababa. Kapag quiz, mas mataas ng konti dito sa uh, seat work and then uh, assignment. And then, yung pinakamalaking uh, contribution is, of course, yung exam nyo or yung test. Okay? So, why the weighted mean? The table below shows the Lund's fall semester uh, course grades. So use the weighted mean uh, formula to find the Lund's GPA for the fall semester. So meron siyang four courses. And then ito yung mga grades niya of those courses. And then meron tayong count of units dito sa mga uh, course niya sa kanyang grade niya. So ang papansin ninyo meron tayong four, four at saka three, three. So ito yung weight ng subject na to. Okay, so mas mabigat to kung kukunin yung averaging kumpara dito sa history at sa chemistry. So parang nangyari is mas malaki yung makukuha mong score kapag mas mataas ka dito sa English rather than uh, history and chemistry. And then same with algebra kasi mas malakas yung, or mas malakas, mas malaki yung credit na makukuha mo. Okay, so ito yung solution natin. Of course, alam nyo na yan, yung uh, grade which is P is 3 times 4. Ito yung weight niya. A naman is 4. So, 4 times 3. B is 1. So, 1 times 3. And then, C is 2 times 4. Okay? So, kunin nyo lahat lang sa mission nun. And then, kunin naman natin lahat nung uh, weight. So, 4 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 is 14. Okay? So, 14 yung weight. So, ito yung solution. So, uh, ito yung una niyang subject. Pangalawa, pangatlo, pangapat. And then it's equivalent uh, weight. We have the 4, the 3, 3, and then 4. And then yung count of weights or summation of weights. So kapag pinag-add nyo yung tatlong yan, tatlo, apat pala, you will get 35. Divided by 14 is equal to 2.5. So yung average ng grade niya or yung GPA niya is between B and C. So hindi ko alam kung anong tawag doon. So B plus or B minus. Wala kasi nasa baba siya ng C and then C plus yata. May mga ganun sila eh. So hindi ako familiar. Pero parang ganun yun. Okay? So ganun sa weighted mean. Okay? May mga equivalent weights of each sample. Alright, so any questions so far? Wala po. Alright. So as usual, after this Example, you're going to have a quiz or just simply an activity, okay? So table shows uh, Janet's spring semester course grades. So use the weighted mean formula to find Janet's GPA for the spring semester. So dinagdag ko na to. Actually, buti na lang may nagtanong uh, kanina kung ano to yung gagamitin na, yan, kung four-point grading pa rin may gagamitin. So yes, so use the four-point grading system on the last example. So itong A na to. Course grade niya is 4, I think. Tama ba? Yeah, 4. 4, 3, 2, 0 yata tong F. Kasi bagsak na yung F. Okay, ito yung feeling grade. 
and then B is a three pala. And then it's equivalent weight. Okay? So, hanggang dito na lang muna. Meron na lang yata tayong 30 seconds. So, for now, uh, have a break muna. 5 to 7 minutes. Okay? And then, wait kayo for the second link or the part 2 of our meeting.